there was a lack of confidence more in, in planning. That's what came, came about, the idea that you could discover these relationships. And quite rightly, a lot of scepticism crept in from policymakers. Um, the idea that we could somehow quantify this. So in a sense, we then went back to pr first principles and said, well, if we leave it to markets, you know, markets will in a sense you know, solve the problem um, and we needn't be as interventionist. At the same time the computer was allowing us to understand this interconnected world, it was also building it and driving it faster and faster. And so there was a feeling just empirically that the idea of leaving it to the market was very soundly based, that it wasn't just justified in equilibrium theory, uh, but markets clearly were delivering, and they did, dramatic results in terms of prosperity, increases in lifespan. This is the point where the environmentalists and the economists start to diverge from each other. Because for the economists, it's all about bigger, faster, global. They'd learned the lesson that the economy was not something they could just control. Instead, they started to see it as a kind of natural system that you absolutely must not regulate, which fed right into the new free market ideology, which declared you cannot buck the market. The global financial economy began to grow as never before. But as it did, so did its unpredictability. From the point of view of stability, control, predictability, it is a bad idea to drive a system to its limit, to uh, warm up the atmosphere, uh, to uh, make more, to put more complication in the economy. I think the issue of growth is obviously it's, it's at the heart of economics, but it's also at the heart of the climate problem. The more you uh, mess up with a uh, nonlinear system, the more likely it's to become chaotic. The records of the meteorologist give cause for concern. At the moment, we have economics, forget about the environment, we dump stuff in the environment, we use it. We have envir environmental change and climate change, which is like driven by humans but doesn't react back on them. That's quite at odds with really the way the world operates, which is that eventually your economic growth could be stopped by the impact you have on the environment, because the environment is the source of our wealth. Ignoring the warnings of the new maths, we instead stoked the system for all we were worth. The free market economists assured us their model said we could simply leave the markets to their own devices, and they would magically find their natural equilibrium. The empirical models that economists use to make forecasts of the economy, which the general public relate to, in a sense, these are throwbacks, these are dinosaurs to the models of the 60s when they appeared to work. They're still searching even now, if you like, for empirical regularities, which they believe will enable them to make successful predictions of the economy. You know, one little tweet, one little clever bit, we can really discover what this law actually is. And the forecasts still rely ultimately on that same approach. Uh, and it doesn't work now, and it never will do. We live in a world that is increasingly uh, going away from uh, anything like an equilibrium or a steady state. I mean, you want now to have growth, 2%, 3% more, and this means uh, exponential growth, something that we know cannot last forever. If something grows exponentially, it must break down at some point. That is something that can be predicted with safety. The process must end somewhere. How it will end, I don't know. Our leaders tell you that we need uh, two or three percent uh, growth per year, and uh, this is necessary for the well-being. Of course, uh, it may be necessary, but it cannot be maintained forever. Exponential growth is basically a, a linear thing, and uh, uh, the claim is that non-linearities will put a stop to this uh, exponential growth, that is for sure.